brutal moment. Ukraine army destroys dozen Russian armored vehicles and heavy artillery strike. Watch a video of Ukrainian forces striking dozens Russian Tiger M IMVs close to the front lines of the battlefield in Ukraine. Two Russian Tiger M IMVs were hit by Ukrainian forces towards the east of the country. A number of Russian servicemen can be seen in and around the two Russian armored vehicles. The armored vehicles were not camouflaged, but out in the open making them an easy target to spot when Ukraine's armed forces used top-of-the-range military drones. Ukraine's armed forces have been upping the ante and striking back against the Russian onslaught. The video shows a Ukrainian drone zooming in and out on the Russian target, two Russian Tigrim IMVs. The footage shows up to three Russian soldiers in and around the two armored vehicles. Ukrainian forces then strike the first vehicle with heavy artillery, which caused a plume of smoke to erupt from the tanks. Over Russian servicemen begin to rush out of the target vehicle, which is quickly becoming engulfed in flames. Defense Secretary Ben Wallace defended the British government's choice to keep sending weapons to Ukraine. Mr. Wallace said, this conference sends a clear message to Russia. We will not tire and we will stand by Ukraine today, tomorrow, and in the months to come. The UK and partner nations have agreed to provide long-term military funding, ensuring a steady flow of finance to provide vital military equipment, essential maintenance of existing kit, and maximizing our UK-led international training program for Ukraine's armed forces. Meanwhile, this footage reportedly shows Ukrainian artillery gunners blowing up a hidden Russian anti-aircraft system in the Kharkiv region. The vehicle can be seen hidden among some trees on the edge of a forest in the Kharkiv region, but this apparently did not stop it from being spotted by Ukrainian forces. The footage, which appears to have been shot by a drone, shows it being blown up, with black smoke rising into the air. After the smoke clears, the remains of the vehicle, reportedly a Soviet-era ZSU-23-4 Shilka, can be seen before the footage ends. The images were obtained from the State Border Service of Ukraine on Monday, August 22nd, who said that the vehicle was a ZSU-23-4 Shilka. They also said in a statement, burn, burn bright, border guards and gunners destroy one more enemy anti-aircraft system. During aerial reconnaissance in Kharkiv Oblast, border guards, together with the defense forces of Ukraine, detected an enemy anti-aircraft vehicle. Then they inflicted fire damage on the target and destroyed the enemy's equipment. The ZSU-23-4 Shilka is a lightly armored, Soviet-era, self-propelled, radar-guided anti-aircraft weapon system. Media contacted the State Border Service of Ukraine for further comment, as well as the Russian Ministry of Defense, but had not received a reply at the time of writing. Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th in what the Kremlin is still calling a special military operation. Tuesday marks the 181st day of the war. Russia has claimed that its casualties have been much lower, but provides infrequent updates on its latest figures. General Valery Zaluzhnyi, 49, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, said on Monday, August 22nd, that almost 9,000 Ukrainian military personnel have been killed since the beginning of Russia's invasion. Russia's security agency, the FSB, successor to the KGB, has accused Ukraine of killing Daria Dagaina. The 29-year-old, whose father is Russian political commentator Alexander Dugin, 60, an ultranationalist Russian ideologue and Vladimir Putin ally, was killed in a car bomb on the outskirts of Moscow on Saturday night.
The FSB has claimed that a Ukrainian woman from the Azov Regiment was behind the killing, but former Russian MP and lawmaker Ilya Ponomarev, currently in the Ukrainian capital Kiev, has claimed that the attack was carried out by Russian partisans from a group allegedly called the National Republican Army. Ponomarev claimed that the National Republican Army is an underground group in Russia geared toward overthrowing Putin's regime. Ponomarev said, this attack opens a new page in Russian resistance to Putinism. We have not been able to independently verify either of these claims. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has reiterated his demand that fighting ceases at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's largest. Guterres said, on Monday, August 22, that the world was at a maximum moment of danger, describing the situation at the plant as critical, as shelling in the area continues. Russia has requested that the United Nations Security Council meet to discuss the Zaporizhia plant, according to Russian state-owned news agency RIA.